Hello, this is Matt Wilhelm from Invasive Species Action Network. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about aquatic macroinvertebrates. But before we start, let's talk about what aquatic macroinvertebrates mean. Aquatic, that means they live underwater. Macro means that these organisms are large enough to be seen with a naked eye. And invertebrate means that they do not have a backbone. All of the organisms that we're going to be talking about today on this presentation are insects, but please keep in mind that aquatic macroinvertebrates can also be crustaceans, they can be clams, snails, worms, and many other things. An insect has three distinct body regions. The first one is the head, and that's where the eye, the mouth, and the antenna will be. The thorax will hold the legs and what will eventually turn into the wings on the adult insect. The abdomen holds the digestive system, the reproductive organs, and sometimes on some aquatic macroinvertebrates, that is where the gills are located. Insects can have one of two different types of life cycles. The first life cycle we'll talk about is the incomplete life cycle. It has three stages, the first stage being the egg, and then the egg turns into a nymph, and then the nymph turns into the adult. One year is a common lifespan, but some aquatic macroinvertebrates like stoneflies have a three-year life cycle. Mayflies, dragonflies, and damselflies are other insects that have this type of life cycle. These pictures show the incomplete life cycle of a mayfly. The picture on the far left is the mayfly nymph. The mayfly nymph will mature and then turn into an adult, which is the middle picture. But the adult stage of the mayfly has two different parts. It has the adult or done stage, and then the picture on the far right is called the spinner. And the spinner is the mature insect that can reproduce. The other type of life cycle is the complete life cycle. It has four stages. They start out as an egg, and the egg turns to a larva. The larva turns into the pupa, and the pupa turns into the adult. The interesting thing here is that the larvae have very uh, little physical resemblance to the adult, and this is because of the pupa stage. In the pupa stage, they go through a big transformation called metamorphosis, where they change completely. You can think of this like how a caterpillar uh, a, turns into a butterfly. It builds a chrysalis. Well, that is the pupa stage, and what comes out of the chrysalis is a totally different insect than what went into the chrysalis. Caddisflies and midges are a couple of insects that have a complete life cycle. This picture shows the complete life cycle of a caddisfly. The caddisfly larva is pictured on the left, and this particular caddisfly larva species built a protective case out of pieces of pebbles and sand. The second picture is a picture of the pupa, and the pupa is starting to change. You can see that it's developing antenna, wings, and legs. The pupa develops down inside of the case made out of pebbles and stones of the larva that's in the first picture. They kind of seal themselves in like a cocoon and go through their metamorphosis there. And then what comes out is the adult, which is pictured on the right-hand side. Let's talk about mayflies for a few minutes. When I'm trying to identify a mayfly, the first thing that I look at is, is how many tails it has. Uh, or any type of macroinvertebrate. I look at the tails first. Um, mayflies can have two or three tails. The mayfly in this picture has three tails. But one thing that mayflies always have are gills on their abdomen. And if you look at this picture, you can see the gills protruding out from the abdomen of this mayfly. Mayflies can be broken into four behavioral groups, clingers, crawlers, burrowers, and swimmers. We don't have many burrowers in Montana because of our rocky river bottoms, but we do have a lot of swimmers, crawlers, and clingers. The mayfly pictured here would be considered a swimmer. It's got a streamlined body. It can cut through the water effortlessly. Clingers have a flattened body, and they're not very good swimmers at all because of that flattened body, but they can cling to rocks in the fastest currents. Crawlers have strong legs to be able to navigate the bottom to find food in rivers, ponds, and lakes. This is a picture of the incomplete life cycle of a mayfly. They start out underwater as a nymph. When the nymph matures, it rises to the top or swims to the, through the water to the top of the water, uh, I'm sorry, to the water surface 
where it breaks through and becomes an emerger. The wings will unfold and upright into the air, almost looking like a little sailboat on top of the water. This is called the dun, and the dun is the first part of the adult life cycle. The duns, when they dry and they can fly, will fly up into the tree branches where they will molt or shed their skin a second time. This is when they become mature and they're called a spinner. The spinners can reproduce. The female spinners fly back to the water, lay their eggs, and shortly after the females will die. And the whole life cycle starts over again. Now let's talk about stoneflies. Stoneflies have two tails. And their gills are usually, I'm sorry, their gills are always on their head and thorax area. And in this picture, you can see the feathery gills that are kind of sticking out uh, along the sides by their legs and their thorax area. Sometimes up near their head also is, are where the gills are. They need cold, clean water to survive. They're a very sensitive macroinvertebrate and do not tolerate pollution or poor water quality. Stoneflies will actually crawl out of the water onto the shore to become adults. There are a few species of stoneflies that swim to the top of the water or the surface of the water like mayflies, but not very many. Most of them will crawl out and onto the surface uh, on the shore. This is a picture of the stonefly incomplete life cycle. The nymphs live underwater. Some of these nymphs will live underwater for three years depending on the species. And when they're mature, they will crawl out onto the shore where they shed their exoskeleton and they'll crawl or climb up into the trees where they'll reproduce, and the females come back to the water to deposit their eggs. Caddisfly larvae have a complete life cycle. Most caddis species will construct a portable case that they surround themselves with. The caddisfly on the right has a case that's made out of small pieces of sand and pebbles. Sometimes they're made out of sticks or dead leaves. The picture on the left is a picture of a free living caddis. Some caddis flies do not build a case. Rather, they just graze and crawl around on rocks eating algaes until it's time to go through metamorphosis where they spin a silk and go through their metamorphosis there and change into a pupa and then finally into an adult. This is a picture of a caddis fly pupa. You can see that it's going through changes. It's developing wings and antenna and legs if you look carefully. The caddisfly pupa develops in the case, if it's a case caddis. And the interesting thing here about the caddisfly pupa is that they're terrible swimmers. So what happens is during metamorphosis, gas bubbles will build up around the pupa. And when the pupa is mature and leaves the protective case, the gas bubbles will carry the pupa quickly to the surface. This is a caddisfly adult. It has a tent-shaped wing over top of its back. They have long antenna, and the females will return to the water to lay their eggs either on top of the surface, or some of these females will dive down under the surface of the water to safely deposit their eggs on rocks or logs or vegetation, ensuring the health and safety of their young. This is a picture of the caddisfly complete life cycle. The larvae live underwater on rocks and logs and vegetation. And when the pupa is mature, the gas bubbles that entrain its body will rise to the surface and break through the water surface. Its wings will come out. They'll fly up to the trees where they'll reproduce. The females will fly back to the water and either deposit their eggs on top of the river or they will dive down and deposit their eggs subsurface. Mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies in the scientific world are known as indicator species. They can indicate how healthy or unhealthy the water is. If you have mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies in your river, creek, or stream, you know that that water is very healthy, low pollution, high oxygen, high nutrition. And stoneflies are the most sensitive of all the aquatic macroinvertebrates. For fun extensions for learning more about aquatic macroinvertebrates, we invite you to click on the link provided below. On behalf of all of the staff for Invasive Species Action Network in Livingston, Montana, we thank you for watching this video. One of the goals of Invasive Species Action Network is to limit the human-caused spread of aquatic invasives. We ask that after each boating or fishing activity, you clean, drain, and dry your watercraft, 
and your fishing gear. For more information on aquatic invasive species or to view other education offerings, please visit www.stopais.org. Thanks so much and have a great day.